All right, so now we're gonna switch gears here. We're gonna to go to a document that uh, is gonna show off a feature I've shown many times before. So this is not a new feature, but people often forget it's there. We're working with an open type font and you can of course uh, use your open type fonts that come with InDesign or any that you bought on your own. And it says a big, there's a big O next to it, letting me know it's open type. And whenever there's an open type font, there's usually some goodness inside that we have multiple glyphs or characters to choose from. So if I wanted to use a different capital I for Bickham Script Pro, I can go to my type menu, I can come down to my glyphs panel, and that will bring up a panel that normally is on entire font, meaning showing me all of the characters or glyphs in that font. But if I choose alternates for selection, that will allow me to go in and see any additional I's that this font has, any additional capital I's. So I can double click to choose a different I for that particular selection. So I have three I's in this case. It's like playing, you know, playing a uh, board game. How many I's do I have on the board? Three. Okay, so let's go in. Let's highlight the letter G. Ooh, I've got a bunch of letter G's I can pick from. I kind of like that one. That's always been one of my favorites. So open type, working with multiple glyphs. That is tip number six. All right, so let's go ahead and now we're gonna switch gears here. We're gonna close the uh, uh, glyphs panel. We're gonna switch over to an animation document I've got here. So we're gonna switch gears and talk about interactive. And in this document, didn't mean to launch that. <laughs> in this document, we've got the, uh, we've got an animation here. Let's zoom out a little bit more. There we go. And we've got this ball or this circle that goes from the left to the right. Now, normally when you create an animation, and we'll switch over to our interactive panel or uh, work group. And in our interactive panel, uh, or in our interactive work group, we have the animation panel, and that panel is showing the circle and it's doing a custom move to the right. However, normally these things happen on page load. What we want to do in this tip, this is tip number seven, is adding your own controls to start, stop, or pause an animation. So there are some buttons here. These are just nothing more than graphics. And what was done is that instead of making this animation default to on page load, we actually chose on button event. So we created a button, and if we click on this button here, we can actually go to the buttons panel, and we can see that the button will play an animation. It will play the animation circle. So you can go in and you can add in your own um, button choices for animation and tell it which animation to play. This one, of course, is set to pause, and this one, of course, is set to stop. So now, if we were to preview this, we can go ahead and preview the whole thing. And again, the circle does not start moving until I click the play button. I can hover over pause to pause it temporarily and move away or stop it to put it back to the beginning. So that is tip number seven, controlling your animations inside of InDesign CS5. Uh, without them starting on page load. All right, next, let's go to tip number eight, which is animating something along a path. Now, in this particular animation, which I've done before, we've got these uh, three little flies flying around a compost pile there. And what I wanted to do is show quickly how, just how something like that would be created. So we'll zoom in down here to this empty spot. We'll just uh, create any object. It could be any object that you create inside of InDesign or bring in as artwork. And we'll uh, apply a color to this. We'll just give it a kind of a red fill. And now what I want to do is I want to animate that object along a path. But I have to go ahead and create the path. So we'll switch over to the Wacom pen here. We'll grab the pencil tool. And we'll just kind of make our own irregular path here for that object to fly along. All right, so we don't want it to have a fill. So we'll just swap the fill and the stroke. We don't really even need a stroke either, but we'll leave it there. We'll go ahead and select the path and we'll select our object. And here's all you have to do. You just go to your animation panel and in the bottom of your animation panel, there is a choice of convert to motion path. In other words, it detects the object and the path and will automatically assign that object to your path. So it's done it for me, it's ready to go. The only other thing I would wanna do now is I would wanna control how this thing plays. So it plays on page load, but I also want it to loop around 
and I want it to take, oh, I don't know, two seconds to do it. I don't want it to be very, I don't want it to be that fast. Last but not least, when do I want it to happen? Because right now it's going to happen last. Just so we don't have to wait for it, I'm going to pull it up to the top so it happens first. Then we'll preview this. And it should be one of the first things to start going there. And there it is. There's my circle animating and looping based on the path that I created in real time. Two seconds to complete the entire path. There you go. So that was your tip number eight animating something along a path. All right, so now let's go to tip number nine. And this is one of my favorite tips that I have not shown before. This is a brand new one. Now I have shown how to do a slideshow inside of uh, InDesign. That's not new, but we're gonna add a little twist to it. So let's go ahead and select these uh, five photos here. We're gonna go to our alignment panel and we're just gonna align them to their lefts and to their tops, which I've done many times before. Now we'll go to the object states panel and we're going to create a new object state for that, which will turn these uh, building shots into one multiple state object. So we'll call it buildings and we'll call it fade, buildings fade. All right, so that, that should give you a hint of what we're going to do here. So now we're going to go ahead and switch to the button. Let's deselect. We'll switch to the button. We'll go to our buttons panel and we're going to say on release, go to the previous state of buildings fade and stop at the first state. All right, next button, go to next state of buildings fade, stop at the last state. So in other words, it will click all the way through to the end and stop, click all the way back to the beginning and stop. It will not loop around. All right, so if we were to preview this right now, uh, let's see, yep, I've got it right. If we were to preview this right now, again, we're gonna get all of our animations happening, but we can now click through, and again, I can't click left because I'm at the beginning, but I can click right until I get to the end and go back. Here's what we want to change. This part I've done before, but we want to change. I don't just want it to jump to the next photo. I'd like a little cross dissolve or fade from photo to photo. That's what's new. All right, so how are we going to do that? Well, you remember, each object has an object state. And if we click on, even if the object selected, we can still jump to the states. So I can click on state number two. I can bring up my animation panel. As long as I keep my object states separate, I can uh, keep those to, you know, showing at the same time. And what I want to do is I want to drill down into state number two. So I'm just going to double click on it. Now I get animation properties for state number two. And I want to choose a preset that says, actually I don't want to, yeah, I do want to choose a preset that says fade uh, let's see, we want to do a fade in. So we're going to fade that in and we're going to have it take two seconds. Okay, so then we just do it again. We go to state number two. Same thing, double click. And now on state load, we want to choose a fade in of two seconds. Okay. And state number four, same thing, uh, double click or double click on the state itself in the actual uh, design. And on state load, we want to do a fade in that takes two seconds. You got it. Okay. And last but not least, state number five, same thing. Double click right on the object on state load. We're going to do a fade in and we're going to say that it takes, you guessed it, two seconds. All right, so now, why didn't we do one for state number one? Because state number one, it's just going to appear when the animation starts. We don't need one for that one. All right, so now we'll go ahead and we'll preview this. That will load up the, uh, it will build an instance of it in Flash right here inside of InDesign. And of course, now we can see our fade. That's it. Look, we're fading from image to image just by clicking on the buttons. So that's a hidden bonus kind of tip number nine. <laughs> Fading your slideshow, giving transitions. And next time I do my portfolio class, uh, Photoshop World, I'll add that into the mix as another way of doing this. All right, so last but not least, tip number 10. How do you make, how do you get buttons that look cool? because these are just triangles on top of opacity rectangles. You know, how do I get better buttons? Well, under your window menu, there is a panel built into InDesign called Sample Buttons. So if you just choose Sample Buttons, 
that will bring up a panel of all kinds of buttons that look like glass and and have a, have uh, light properties to them, and you can just drag them right into your document and use them. You can size them, you can bring them up in the buttons panel, and use them for whatever you want. So if you don't like drawing buttons or choosing buttons or doing things with buttons on your own, we give you a bunch of sample buttons. I think it's like 52 sample buttons to pick from so that you do not have to become a button designer. So that's it for this episode of the Adobe Creative Suite podcast. 10 random InDesign CS5 tips, some of which work in previous versions. That's my time. See you next week. Thanks.